My uncle was the voice of God, my dad was the hand of God. Vout shout, not kill. But they did. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're discussing the horrifying true story of Under the Banner of Heaven. I need you to put your faith in me. Brenda, you're not safe here. For this video, we're looking at the 1984 killing of Brenda Lafferty and her baby Erica, which inspired FX's 2022 miniseries on Hulu. Did you watch Under the Banner of Heaven? Let us know in the comments. The Lafferty Family Watson and Claudine Lafferty had six boys and two girls. Have you met everyone? Uh, gosh, I think so. <laughs> it's impossible. There's so many people, and just when you think you've got them all, there's more. Watson ran his own chiropractic clinic while his wife was the traditional stay-at-home mother. In their home of Provo, Utah, the Lafferty's were known to be upstanding members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They all went on missions and, and started their own businesses. And their family tree goes way back to the pioneers. I mean, it's like marrying into royalty. However, Watson was an authoritarian, often violent with his wife and children, as well as their pets. Following the strict gender hierarchy of the Mormon faith, the Lafferty patriarch was in control of everything. His extremely conservative views and refusal to use conventional medicine, among other things, would influence his sons in their adult lives. Turn thee back toward heaven, a father's designs. Study them closely. His word. Understanding his law. After high school, Ron, the eldest, went to Florida on a mission trip, where he and his future wife Diana got acquainted. The two settled back in Utah and had six children. Ron found work in construction, was involved in the community, and remained a devout Mormon. Uh, Ron uh, sits on the city council. Uh, his first counselor in his bishopric, and keep going, you make it sound impressive. <laughs> <laughs> on Dan's mission trip to Scotland, he met Matilda, who was divorced with two daughters. Their paths would meet again years later in the States, where they ended up tying the knot. And Dan gave me a second shot at life, saved me from all my shame. No shame in divorce if he divorced a Catholic, right, Matilda? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the pair briefly lived in California while Dan learned the chiropractic trade, before going back to Utah, where he joined his dad at work. In addition to his two stepdaughters, Dan fathered four children with Matilda. Brenda Wright joins the family. Unlike the Lafferty's, Lorraine and Dr. James Lewis Wright raised their children with a more liberal view as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Can't get far in a leaky ship and uh, the man of the house who keeps things ship shape, right? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, girls seem to have us boys outnumbered in this old house. Growing up in Twin Falls, Idaho, Brenda Wright was an aspiring journalist. She attended college in Idaho before eventually transferring to Brigham Young University in Utah to study broadcast journalism. I think our savior would much prefer me to finish school at BYU. I mean, their, their broadcast journalism department is respected all over. Brenda even worked as a news anchor on the school's television channel, KBYU. In 1981, she met Alan, the youngest Lafferty brother, and the two began dating. After a 1982 wedding, they put down roots in Utah's American Fork. Soon, Brenda had to put her journalist dreams on hold to start a family. It's Channel 11 News. Look, that's, you know, let's have a bunch of babies. And then you can be a newscaster. You have your degree. People are always going to want to hire you. Her and Alan's daughter Erica Lafferty was born on April 28, 1983. Brenda was caring, confident, strong-willed, and always quick to speak her mind which did not mesh well with the strict, dominating Lafferty family. It all sounds pretty crazy if you ask me. But he didn't ask you, and he wouldn't. So if I was you, I would keep my mouth shut till I'd done my research, if you don't want to sound like an idiot in front of your new family. Ron and Dan saw Brenda's curiosity and outspoken nature as a problem, especially when she befriended their wives and encouraged them to leave their increasingly unstable, violent husbands. A wife who alienates her husband from her children could be risking her life. Dan says that there are some sins that can only be redeemed through the shedding of blood. That, that's all. Fundamentalism and the School of Prophets Believing he didn't need to obey earthly rules, Dan stopped doing basic things like paying taxes and traffic tickets. I think that we need water and power more than... The government needs more of our money, don't you think? <laughs> and it's unbelievable. It really is. The more anti-government he became, the more he was drawn to Mormon fundamentalism and encouraged his brothers to follow his lead. 
Dan believed the modern-day LDS church had strayed too far away from the church's original teachings and practices. In his research into Mormon history, he came across The Peacemaker, published in 1842. Our church vowed that if man's laws ever conflicted with ours, that we would be ranged under the banner of heaven and against the government. So this is what my father set me on track to find to understand God's laws and how we have perverted them with man. The pro-polygamy text outlined archaic beliefs which Dan put into practice at home. Matilda's freedom was greatly limited, and life at home got unbearably hard. To deny your priesthood holder is fornication. You know that, and fornication is punishable by what, my love? Dan and most of the Lafferty brothers joined the School of the Prophets, led by Bob Crossfield, who went by Prophet Onias. It was a distinct group centered around polygamy and quote-unquote divine revelations. I just remember them bringing in a pulpit and speaking in our own home. It was very hush-hush and it was just weird. Ron was seen as being a logical sibling, so Diana asked him to talk some sense into Dan. However, their meeting had anything but the intended effect, as Ron quickly became obsessed with the fundamentalist ideology. And in this way, we may confirm that you, Ron, are our one. That didn't bode well for him at work, and he was fired. In addition, his marriage crumbled. In 1982, Dan was excommunicated from LDS after trying to wed his teenage stepdaughter. Neither Rebecca's mom nor the Mormon church would stand for that. A year later, Ron was also kicked out for his extremism. Around the same time, Diana filed for divorce and moved to Florida with their kids. By 1984, Ron began experiencing divine revelations, and in March, he wrote the, quote, removal revelation. He claimed, that God gave him the names of people that needed to be, quote, removed in rapid succession, including his notoriously outspoken sister-in-law, Brenda, and his niece, Erica. She disobeyed her husband, and me, and God's chosen men. That's fornication. That's fornication! Also on the list were Chloe Lowe, Diana's friend, and Richard Stowe, who oversaw his removal from the church. These are the people Ron saw as instrumental in ending his marriage. And you will rebuild your family. For when they learn how blessed you are, Diana will run back to your side with more love in her heart. All of the School of the Prophets members were aware of the so-called revelation, including Brenda's husband, Alan. While he didn't agree with it, he also didn't tell Brenda about it. And I certainly didn't see it like that at the time. You know, that, that I was building Brenda a new cage, a prison. The deaths of Brenda and Erica Lafferty. On July 24, 1984, Utah's Pioneer Day, 24-year-old Brenda Lafferty was home alone with 15-month-old Erica while Alan was out. Dan reportedly entered the home first, and Ron followed. Got out and he said a prayer and felt the need to just say, okay, God, I guess this is my part. If I should not do this, please send me an angel to stop me, and he walked in. Two men they had been traveling around with, Chip Carnes and Ricky Knapp, waited in a green station wagon outside. Brenda was savagely attacked, and Erica's fate was just as gruesome. How could somebody be so disconnected that they could just take a baby's life like that? That night, Alan Lafferty came home to a grisly scene with Brenda on the kitchen floor and Erica in her crib, both sadly deceased. I can't, I can't, I can't think straight right now. <laughs> Can I change my clothes, please? <laughs> After the crimes, the men moved on to the next name on the list, breaking into the home of Chloe Lowe and stealing some of her belongings. Luckily, she wasn't there at the time. On their way to Richard Stowe's house, they failed to take a necessary turn and continued heading out to Nevada. Dan said it was a sign from God that they needed to stop killing till they made enough cash to keep going. On July 30th, Ron's vehicle was spotted, but when investigators arrived, they didn't find the Lafferty's, only their two accomplices. In August, though, the Lafferty brothers were finally found in Reno and taken into custody. Dan. Dan? Dan? Utah v. Lafferty. Ron and Dan Lafferty were charged with two counts of criminal homicide, 
two counts of aggravated burglary, and two counts of conspiracy to commit homicide. In exchange for their testimony against the Lafferty's, Carnes and Knapp faced less severe charges. I, I only started hanging out with Dan because he was a good time at first. So what changed? All the heaven talk, man. Shortly before their trial was set to begin, Ron attempted to take his own life in his prison cell. It was decided that the brothers would have separate trials, allowing Ron time to recover. Unusual, odd, eccentric, uh, in extreme, that I think it fooled a lot of experts thinking he was seriously mentally ill. In January 1985, Dan's trial got underway, and despite being appointed attorneys to aid in his defense, he represented himself. The jury found him guilty on two counts of first-degree murder in addition to other charges. He was given two life sentences that carried no possibility of parole. Though his competency was in question, Ron's trial started in April 1985. Gardner found that Lafferty wasn't suffering from mental illness, but a severe personality disorder. A jury found him guilty on all accounts, and he was sentenced to death. But in 1991, Ron's attorneys got the verdict overturned due to his mental state and alleged incompetence. Ron was retried in 1996 and was once again given the death penalty. In November 2019, 78-year-old Ron Lafferty died of natural causes. As of June 2022, Dan remains incarcerated. Reportedly, former LDS President Gordon Hinckley said the Lafferty brothers, quote, have no connection to us whatsoever. They don't belong to the church. There actually are no Mormon fundamentalists. Under the banner of heaven, author John Krakauer published his controversial book about the Lafferty murders, Under the Banner of Heaven, A Story of Violent Faith, in July 2003. In the work, Krakauer also examines the founding of Mormonism by Joseph Smith and how a history of violence ties to the Lafferty's crimes. You know, back around our founders, they, um, they saw little girls and women, all of them, as eternal servants. They were taught to be obedient and submissive. They were even abused. In April 2022, Oscar-winning screenwriter Dustin Lance Black's dramatized miniseries adaptation premiered on FX on Hulu. Both the book and the series have received plenty of backlash from The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My concern is, is I think a lot of people will see this and see it as actual history. It is a fictionalized story. Brenda's sister, Sharon Wright Weeks, has also spoken out against the show. According to her, the portrayal of her late sister, played by actress Daisy Edgar Jones, is inaccurate. If you don't interview people who were actually there and took charge of the case, uh, I don't know how real it could be. She's not fond of the series' depiction of Mormons more generally, either. We've been struggling with public perception. We don't need any more detrimental press now. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.